Welcome to our weekly roundup of key business developments in Sri Lanka. I'm Nishana Figuera, and here are this week's top stories. Sri Lanka reaches debt deal with Paris Club creditors. Sinope granted $4.5 billion oil refinery deal. Apparel exports continue to suffer. In our main story this week, Sri Lanka and the official creditor committee reached a debt restructuring deal. According to the statement from the Paris Club Secretariat, the parties agreed on the main parameters of a debt treatment consistent with those of the extended fund facility arrangement between Sri Lanka and the IMF. This allows for the first review of Sri Lanka's EFF arrangement to be presented to the IMF Executive Board for approval, enabling the second disbursement of about $330 million under the arrangement. The official creditor committee expressed that it looks to formalize the agreement in the coming weeks in an MOU with the Sri Lankan authorities, noting that it expects other bilateral creditors to consent to sharing the information for the creditor committee to evaluate comparability of treatment regarding their own bilateral agreement. This week, President Ranil Vikramasinghe, along with 80 member delegation, is attending the World Climate Action Summit in Dubai. Implementation and transformation of key climate-related decisions into concrete actions and credible plans, raising ambitions as well as commitment on climate change issues are on the agenda. Presidential Climate Change Advisor Ruan Vijaywardhana told the Sunday Times that the country is focusing on the Tropical Belt Initiative, the Climate Justice Forum and the International Climate Change University, adding that the Tropical Belt Initiative would be used to press developed countries to invest in more green initiatives like renewable energy and green technology for countries in the Tropical Belt. The Sri Lankan cabinet approved China Petroleum and Chemical Corporation, known as Sinopec, to establish a petroleum refinery in the southern Hamathota port. According to Kanchana Vijay Sekar, Minister of Power and Energy, the investment will amount to $4.5 billion, which will cater to exports as well as local markets. Though Sinopec and Vitol Asia were shortlisted out of seven companies, Vitol subsequently withdrew its bid. Sri Lanka's apparel industry called for government support to expand the country's apparel export markets, suggesting bilateral and trade agreements bolster the ailing industry. Apparel exports in October were affected by high production costs from multiple electricity tariff hikes and slowdown in key markets. According to Dambika Fernando, chairman of the Federation of Free Trade Zone Investors, 20% of some large-scale garment factories have decided to close for three months after December, adding that about 50% of the small and medium-scale factories have been closed. Sri Lanka will borrow 60 million US dollars from the Asian Development Bank. The funds are to be used for ongoing and incomplete road works. This is part of the broader integrated road investment program aimed at enhancing road safety and minimizing public inconvenience. The government contributes 8.5 million US dollars towards road development. In our weekly tourism update, tourist arrivals in the first 23 days of November reached 117,597, pushing the yearly total to over 1.2 million. Average daily arrivals surged to over 5,000, significantly higher than the 3,500 recorded a month earlier. The primary source market during the month was India, followed by Russia and Germany. Arrivals are to fall far short of the monthly target of 204,000 visitors. Now let's take a look at the weekly movement of the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index at the Colombo Stock Exchange. At the Treasury bill auction held on Wednesday, yields on all maturities contracted. Bids amounting to 290 billion rupees were received, of which 160 billion were accepted. The Sri Lankan rupee depreciated against the dollar this week, with the central bank's indicative mid-spot rate ranging around 328 and 329 rupees. In other market news, the Colombo Stock Exchange approved Cargill's Bank Limited's application for the listing of its ordinary voting shares by the way of an IPO in the stock exchange. The share will either be listed in the main board or Dirisavi board. 62.5 million ordinary voting shares will be issued at 8 rupees per share. 
And with that, we wrap up for this week. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel at the link below for regular updates on economic and business developments in Sri Lanka. Until we see you again next week, thank you for watching. Stay safe.